Well, um, often it's difficult to focus on sort of reading papers and thinking when your email's beeping and there's 101 distractions. So my master plan is, and I haven't really tried it yet, the one I want to sort of just focus on something, I'll take myself away from my computer and sit on my beanbag. And again, it's in uh, Anne Green purple, isn't it? <laughs> Indeed. I, I spent a while searching on the web for a nice purple beanbag. So it's basically something I've been working on on and off for a long time. And these things called primordial black holes, which are these very small black holes that might form in the very early universe if you get a lot of matter in one place. And so the idea of these things is that they're very good at constraining models of the early universe, because if you produce too many of them, they wreck havoc. They evaporate and sort of spit out high energy particles. I, the thing I guess I've been focusing on more for the last few years is dark matter, because that's something which has become sort of very topical because there are experiments doing it and they might find something any day soon. Whereas the black holes are interesting, but they're no more interesting now than they were a decade ago, really. And well, at the moment, I've been wrapping up some work on dark matter. That's sort of ticking away nicely in the background. So it was sort of time to turn my attention to this because we've sort of got a bit bogged down with some technicality. So I'm trying to get to the bottom of those. This quantity here is basically telling you how big the fluctuations in the density are and the difficult thing is that when you try to calculate it in the early universe there are different ways of doing it and they give you slightly different answers and so basically what should be going on here is that these different curves are different ways of doing the calculation and over here at least they should all match up and as you can see that sort of three of them sort of do but the other one definitely doesn't so I'm trying to get to the bottom of why these things aren't matching up here. So the Big Bang is basically just this our, our best bet model for how the universe has evolved. And it's that sort of basically the universe started very hot and dense and as it's been expanding and cooling ever since. And we can wind things back in time and do calculations. And we can go right the way back to the first couple of minutes and work things out. And they match up pretty well with things we observe in the universe. When you go back to sort of the first tiny fraction of a second, then at some point we know the laws of physics are going to break down and we can't go back any further. So these black holes could potentially form sort of any time from sort of a tiny fraction of a second sort of up to sort of ooh, some probably even of order years. Well, black holes in general are these very dense objects from which light can't escape, hence the name. And um, well, the familiar black holes are things that form at the end point of stellar evolution after sort of stars reach the end of their lives, go bang, and then collapse to form a black hole. But these black holes are very different. These are ones that might form in the early universe when the universe was, say, a few seconds or minutes old. And they're much, much smaller than the sort of conventional black holes which form from the collapse of stars. Well, it turns out as if there were too many of these black holes, they could have all sorts of nasty consequences because black holes famously can evaporate via emitting Hawking radiation. Um, but the sort of big stellar remnant black holes, they're so big that they lose mass very slowly and they just sit around. But these little black holes, they can evaporate very on to less than the age of the universe. And so the radiation they can produce can cause all sorts of problems and mess up things that we know work very nicely. So what you can do is say, well, there can't be too many of these black holes formed. And then that allows you to then put constraints on models of the early universe, which could potentially form these things. And it's really one of the few ways we've got of getting a handle on what happened in this very early period of the universe's evolution. So um, there's a model called inflation, which is basically a period of very rapid expansion which we think might have happened in the early universe. It solves various problems with the standard Big Bang model and also is a way of generating little fluctuations from which galaxies and all the structure we see in the universe today can form. And so these black holes, the inflation models can produce them, so therefore they're a way of constraining these models. Most of my day-to-day -day work involves using computers lots, but this is actually come back largely to getting a notebook out and a pen and grinding through some scary equations. And then finally, I did the calculation several different ways, got some different equations. So the final step was then to turn to the computer and get the computer to sort of calculate what those equations look like. So... That's and an impressive looking diagram now, I quite like that. <laughs> don't understand it, but I like it. Then that's the other version of it with more wiggles. 